Hello my friends and welcome back to Maker's Muse. Yes, it's official. You can now rip files from Fallout 4 for 3D printing. And in this video, actually this series of videos, I'm going to show you how to do it and how you can finish a model for 3D printing. Let's do it. All right, so let's get the show on the road. So first we're going to need the Bethesda archive extractor for the BA2 files that are in Fallout 4. So Fallout 4 has changed the format of their archives from BSA to BA2. So the, the extractor needed to be updated, but you can get it from here on Nexus mods. Next, we need NIFScope. Again, NIFScope needed to be updated to cope with the new NIF files in Fallout 4. And the NIFScope team, they, yeah, they've done a freaking amazing job. So within a week or two of the game coming out, they'd updated NIFScope to be able to open the new NIFs. So we've got a pre-alpha 4 here. Um, this will probably change very quickly. So uh, at the moment, this link just goes to pre-alpha 4, but it does what we need. We need to open the NIFs and save them as an OBJ. That's all we want. That's all we need. And it does it. Beautifully. So grab the new NIFScope pre-alpha 4 from this link. Then we're going to need the NetFab cloud service. Again, I'm not sure what's going on with the Microsoft owning NetFab cloud, but whatever. The link still works perfectly. You upload the mesh that you extract and you download a fixed file. Really simple, works good. And then Mesh Mixer. If you know anything about my videos, you know that I absolutely love Mesh Mixer. So here it is. Right, so we've got our software and now we need to open up the Bethesda Archive Extractor. Run. Go to File, Open File. So navigate to your Steam Apps Common Fallout 4 Data folder. And these are where all the BA2 archives are. We want Meshes here. There's also Meshes Extra, which is interesting. They're both pretty huge files. So keep this in mind. You need a lot of disk space when you're messing around with games like this. There's a lot of data in there. So select it, and then you want to extract them to a folder. So again, make a new folder. For extracted files, that'll do, and it'll start extracting and just let it do its thing. But I've already done this, so I'm just gonna cancel it. <laughs> it'll usually take about five minutes, ten minutes, depending on how fast your computer, uh, how fast your hard drive is. Uh, cool. So, with that done, we need NIFScope. So, as I said, this is pre alpha 4. A few features are disabled. All we need to do though is open the file and save it as an OBJ, which it can do perfectly. So, file open and under Fallout 4 extracted files we have our meshes and these are all the meshes apart from that other meshes folder in Fallout 4 so Fallout 4 is a really ambitious game there's tons of components in it and it reflects that in this folder there's so much stuff so for, for the weapons for example you'll know if you play the game that you know a 10 millimeter pistol isn't just a 10 millimeter pistol file it's like the file plus scopes plus muzzles plus different magazine styles, different handle styles. You can change all of those in the game, therefore there's different meshes for each of those components and then the game just sort of stitch, stitches them together. So there's therefore no reason you can't have your favorite game weapon reproduced in real life by just choosing the parts and stitching them together yourself in something like Mesh Mixer. Also it is really worth mentioning that digging into game files can reveal spoilers, that will reveal spoilers, to be honest. I remember when I was playing around with the Neverwinter Nights creation kit, and it was like, Erebeth evil, and I'm like, but Erebeth is so nice. And I, yeah, so <laughs> it's really important to note that you may come across some sort of spoilers digging around files of a game, which is fair enough. But anyway, that aside, I'm going to go to junk jet and let's have a look at yeah let's have a look at the junk jet again see you can all different types of grips and whatever's <laughs> so that's like the main body of it uh and there's all tons of so many different files you can look at that's the loading screen for the junk jet so that's the whole thing complete for the loading screen and when i came across these load files i got quite interested to think okay yeah fallout 4 does have those load files which you can interact with so Lo and behold, if you scroll into da, 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 load screen art, these are all those files. And it's with these files that I found uh, perfect candidates for 3D printing because they're already posed, they look good, and um, you don't have to do much work to them, you just have to make them fixed for printing. So, for example, we can fire up a sentry bot. That's so cool. Again, no textures, so um, you can load textures in NIFScope, but I don't need them for printing. Uh, let's have a look at yeah, the armor. Yeah, there's so much cool stuff. But what I'd really like to print is a Deathclaw. Because you can encounter a Deathclaw very early on in Fallout 4. 
and I want to print one off. So if we find Deathclaw. Hey, there we go. So creature Deathclaw. And that's an ambulance going past. So here we got the two different types of Deathclaw poses. So we've got this one here. And the other one's running. I think this one's my favorite though. So what we're going to do is file, export, obj, yes, okay, and then call it whatever, deathclaw, whatever. And you can see I've already exported quite a few files of interest. So let's just save that. Yes, it's good. So now we're done with NIFScope. So let's close NIFScope down. And we want to just fire up MeshMixer quickly to have a quick look at the files because they're going to need repairing, but I just want to have a quick look at them. So here's the file straight out of the game, out of Fallout. And Fallout and any other game mesh for that matter, will not they will not be printable. They will not be 3D printable straight out of the game. You have to repair them. Um, just as an example, if I go to Analysis and Inspector, it's going to be... It's going to take a while to show you all the errors. And yeah, check that out. They're all errors and holes and problems. So... <laughs> Don't try to print the meshes straight out of the game. You have to fix them first. So to fix them easily and for free, you want to go to the NetFab Cloud Service, which is this one. Upload the file. And let it do its thing, uploading and downloading the finished file. All right, so NetFab Cloud's done its magic and we can download the file. So just download it again. And it says Deathclaw fixed, because it's fixed it. So let's fire up the fixed one and I'm just going to add it to the same scene as the unfixed one. There you go. So that's the difference it's made. And if we go to inspector, you know, no errors at all. There may, may occasionally be one or two small errors, but nothing bad. Um, and I found that the NetFab cloud service is like a 90% sure bet in making sure the file is fixed, ready for printing. I rarely encounter issues using that from Fallout meshes. They usually stitch together pretty good. However, there's a few other considerations we need to take into account before printing. One of those is scale. So if we go to analysis, units dimensions, we can see how big the, the actual model is. So at the moment, it's about 229 high, which is pretty decent by 300 deep. So, you know, yay big. I have an up mini um, that I'm going to be printing this on. I do have a WANHAL, but I want to print this in ABS. So my up mini can only print to 120 high. So let's scale him down to 120 high. Um, and then see how it prints on the up mini. And here's how he went. So he's pretty cute. Um, I'm amazed actually how well a lot of the details did print. But I did break a couple of the claws and one of the horns because it's just so small. So it's a good start, but I want more. I want to print him at the original size. I want to print him at the original 230 mil high, which is pretty substantial. And to do that, we're going to have to slice the file up. So here's the value add for this video. So, so far, what I've been doing is pretty much the same as ripping files from Skyrim or Fallout 3. It's pretty much the same, but with updated tools. But in this bit of the video, I'll be showing you how to selectively slice the parts down to print pretty much anything you want, any size, on smaller printers. So let's get into that. Okay, so you can slice up models to 3D print them in different bits using the plain cut tool in Mesh Mixer. So if I select the model and edit and plain cut and select slice, I can slice up my model. Really good, however, you'll quickly notice if I'm slicing, for example, you know, his leg off, it's also going to cut the arm, it's also going to cut the tail. You know, if I'm slicing the torso, it's also going to cut the arms in half. That's not what we want. So for some models, the simple plain cut tool works fine. But for this guy, we want to slice him in a way that we just have like a torso. Then we glue the head, the arms, the legs on to that torso. Um, and then have the finished model. And we can do that using the select tool to isolate areas we want to cut selectively. Does that make any sense? If not, follow along. So, under the select tool, we're going to click a bounding box around his arm, for example, like that. 
So we've got some triangles highlighted there. And now we go to edit plane cut. And we can cut through the arm, but it's not going to cut through anything else because it's only affecting the triangles we selected. So if I drag that around, also the up and down arrows let you change increments for moving the plane. We can slice, uh, oops, we can slice through the arm. Be sure to select slice not cut because we want both sides. There you go. Um, make sure it's showing it as a solid fill. If it's not showing a solid fill, you might have not selected all the triangles. And accept. Doesn't look like much happened. We'll go back to edit and separate shells. And what we've got there is the arm nicely nicely cut. Also, I might have um, accidentally selected looks like a little bit of a dag from the end of his arm. So, you know, you might want to go back and make sure those triangles weren't selected. But you get the idea. You can easily select different components and cut them so you leave uh, the rest of the parts of the object untouched. So here's one I prepared earlier. So in this Deathclaw model I've already gone through and selected all the different components and sliced them using the selective slicing tool by isolating the triangles that I wanted to cut. So you can see I can turn the torso off and all these parts are separated for 3D printing which is really neat. <laughs> And all we need to do now is select the ones we want. So I'll just turn them all off so you can see them easier. So let's select, for example, the arm. And then you want to save that. Export as, you know, death claw right arm, which I've already got there. And then save it as the STL. And just go through each one, saving them off and we can start printing them. Simple as that. Alrighty, so that concludes part one. In the second part, I'll show you how to assemble and put together your massive death claw into a really awesome, uh, massively 3D printed figurine. And also, I'll show you how to use this stuff. So this is XTC 3D, and it's a two-part uh, thick epoxy-like coating that can smooth out the lines of your 3D print. So I'm going to show you how it works. I'll do a bit of a, bit of a review on it, if you like. Yeah, you look forward to that. Oh, and also, yes, I'm still chugging away at the Fallout 3 build. So this is the auto axe. That's the blade. And this is the, the weapon itself. Um, to be honest, it takes so long. I just haven't had much time at all to do the whole process of spray bog sanding and all of that. So I've gotten this far. Now it's going to come down to the final painting and touches. So I'm definitely going to be doing releasing a video on this, but it may still be a little while. So haven't given up, given up on it yet, but maybe a little while longer. So thanks for thanks for waiting out for that one, guys. If you have been. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you're enjoying Fallout 4. I know I certainly am. There, I've got my Pit Boy here. Got my Pit Boy box, and yeah, it's a great game. Uh, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more 3D printing content, please feel free to subscribe. It helps me out a lot. And also give me a like if you enjoyed this video and want to want to see more gaming hack uh, 3D printed related videos. See you around, guys. Bye.